Good day, friends. These days, there's a lot of discussion in diabetes circles about cardiovascular outcomes, about renal outcomes, and about how to improve them. Many of us may think that this is a very modern concept, something that has come into being just in the past five or six years. Many of us may also feel that something known as the glucocentric approach is outdated. It's a fossilized approach. On both counts, we are wrong. Cardiorenal outcome studies have been done for the past many decades. And for many decades, we have understood that the very reason of managing diabetes is to improve cardiac and renal outcomes. We'll talk about that today. The definition of diabetes was based on, will be based on, and is currently also based on glucose numbers. So therefore, you have to have glucose at the center of your approach to diabetes care. Let's talk about both of these aspects and let's look at some lessons that we have learned from the advanced trial. A trial that was very advanced, far ahead of its time, far ahead of the curve as compared to other CVOTs. We all know that diabetes is defined by hyperglycemia. Because of this hyperglycemia, there is vascular dysfunction and that leads to morbidity and mortality, both from cardiovascular disease and kidney disease. DeFranzo coined the ominous octet. And what he suggested was that there are different pathophysiologic mechanisms. But finally, the end result is hyperglycemia. So a concept of glucocentric approach was created. Look at the terminology here. A combination of, that's fine, we need multiple drugs. Hypoglycemic drugs, drugs causing hypoglycemia. Should be added to lifestyle interventions targeting intensive HbA1c. We need HbA1c as low as possible. There were issues with this definition and with this approach, but now look at the sudden the subtle change in semantics. From glucocentric, we go to gluco-optimized. We need to optimize glucose. We need to optimize our approach to glucose management. And see what the words we use? A combination of drugs that again is uh, taken, that we have to have multiple drugs because there are multiple pathophysiologies, should be added to lifestyle interventions, right? Because lifestyle modification is treatment number one. To target HbA1c, HB1C still remains our main target without causing collateral damage, without causing hypoglycemia or weight gain. This is a gluco-optimized approach. Now, let us see why these words are used and whether there is evidence to back what we are saying. I am reminded of a quote from the Rig Ved, one of the oldest books in the world. The Rig Ved says, the truth is one but the paths to it are many. For us in diabetes care, the truth is good glucose control, glucose optimization, but the paths to it are many. Let us see what paths we can use and let us see what the advanced trial taught us. Even before the advanced trial came, the UK PDS, and this was reported when I was a student, had confirmed statistically significant improvement in microvascular outcomes, and numerically significant improvement in macrovascular outcomes. When we looked at both of them together, there was statistical significance, but by a mere whisker, by just 0.002 of p-value, uh, the improvement in sudden death, non-fatal MI and fatal MI could not reach statistical significance. Do remember, however, that the people who worked in UK PDS did not have access to the modern uh, drugs that we have. They do not have access to modern biochemistry. They could not monitor their patients as well as we are able to. After KBDS, uh, there was increased interest and the advanced reduced the risk of macrovascular disease and whether we could target a low HB1C, even lower than what UKPDS was doing, in a safe manner. So can glucose control be strong and safe? And was there a threshold? Could we bring HB1C down to as low as uh, possible in spite of or regardless of the initial glucose levels and still achieve benefit? 
the persons recruited for advance reflected real world clinical practice 20 countries participated here including india our lead investigator was dr nikhil tandon from aims new delhi as long as diabetes was diagnosed after age of 30 the patient was uh, aged 55 or more any level of blood glucose was allowed provided there was no need for insulin the people who were included reflect what you and i see in our clinics every day one third had micro uh, macrovascular disease one tenth had microvascular disease and 28 percent had other risk factors including microalbuminuria the average a1c was 7.5 so it's very difficult to bring an a1c of 7.5 even lower advance did differ from accord and vadt in accord and vadt the average age of the participant was more and the average hba1c was higher in advance, a glycolyzide XR-based regimen was used. The target HB1C was 6.5. The researchers were able to achieve this and were able to maintain this HB1C over five years. Now, this is something significant, something important. Uh, getting an HB1C of 6.5 and then maintaining it for five years is very difficult to do in clinical practice, but they were able to do it. And they showed that irrespective of the body mass index, the age or the HB1C at onset, the results were the same. So irrespective of the background of the patient, glycolyzide XR did help in achieving good HB1C. Because of this, there was a 10% reduction, which was statistically significant, in combined major micro and macrovascular outcomes. See these two slides here. HbA1c began to diverge within six months. So within six months, you got proof of good glucose control, and then this was sustained. And within 24 months, there was improvement in vascular outcomes. So when you control glucose, Within about one and a half years, you do see an improvement in vascular health. The follow-up was also strong. It was five years, a robust follow-up. Why is it that advanced showed good results while Accord and VADT did not? Perhaps the drugs being used were different. Perhaps the approach was different. Perhaps both of the above. In Accord, there was a lot of use of insulin. HbA1c was brought down very fast in elderly people. In VADT, rosy glitazone was used and there was weight gain. <clears throat> Accord and VADT both showed high levels of severe hypoglycemia. Advance did not have hypo. So the take home message is you can achieve good HbA1c control. You can reduce macro and microvascular outcomes. Uh, you can improve macro and, vascular, uh, macro and microvascular outcomes. You can reduce adverse events, provided you do not cause hypoglycemia. And this can be achieved with glycoside XR based regimen, as was shown in advance. All these uh, studies were conducted about 20 years ago, and they have been reported nearly 15 years ago. And because they were ahead of their curve, they were even ahead of the FDA guidance. Perhaps that is why we did not give them their due at that point in time. We talked of hypoglycemia. Let's look at weight gain. In VADT, 7.8 kg weights, weight gain. In Accord, 3.5 kg. But in advance, virtually zero. So in advance, glycolazide was able to buck what we call the KG A1C paradox. The KG A1C paradox says that with some traditional drugs, when you try to bring down the A1C and improve outcomes, you end up increasing KG or weight and worsening outcomes. So you balance out things. But here we were able to buck the KG A1C paradox and we were able to achieve good glucose control, good outcomes without weight gain. It is the use of insulin and glitazones in practice which actually contributes to weight gain. So we should be aware of this. In India, we do not usually speak of weight loss all the time. We speak of weight optimization. Some of your patients will be overweight or obese. Try to get their weight down. Others will be normal weight. Make sure they do not gain weight. Yet others will be thin and malnourished with a low BMI. There we have to use anabolic drugs which help increase weight. 
Now, we've spoken about uh, diabetes control. We've spoken about sustained benefit of glycolyzide XR. We've seen how it improves overall outcomes. And we've seen that that, that trick is actually preventing weight gain and preventing hypoglycemia. These days, we talk a lot about cardiovascular outcome trials. And then there is a genuine uh, concern that the kidney, the microvasculature, is treated like a poor cousin, while actually that is not true. The advanced trialists did understand this, and they analyzed what happened to kidney outcomes. So irrespective of whether the patient had macro or microalbuminuria or normoalbuminuria, glycolyzide XR-based regimen was able to reduce the risk of end-stage renal disease by 65%, highly significant. And if you started glycolyzide XR in a person with macroalbuminuria, the results were better. In fact, macroalbuminuria could be converted or regressed to micro and to normoalbuminuria with this regimen. Uh, remember that in advance, we used glycolyzide and also perindopril. These days, we speak a lot about remission of diabetes. And we say that the word reversal of type 2 diabetes is wrong. This is correct. But here, looking at the advanced data, perhaps we can tell our patients that we do have a drug which gives you a statistically significant chance of not only remission, but also reversal of macroalbuminuria, reversal of microalbuminuria. And this is something important. This is something that we should not forget. When we choose drugs for glucose control, we should be mindful that they do not cause hypoglycemia and weight gain. And we should be mindful that if they are able to reduce albuminuria, which is a marker of endothelial dysfunction, they will be able to improve overall outcomes, macro as well as microvascular, and they will be able to reduce the burden upon our nephrology services. And this is data that came from advance. We speak of metabolic memory, metabolic karma. The advanced trialists went on to conduct the advance on trial where after the initial five years of therapy, they followed up patients for 10 years. What they found out was that participants who had got tight control initially with glycolyzide MR continued to enjoy freedom from kidney out disease, end-stage renal disease, even after 10 years. Initially, it was a 65% reduction. And even after 10 years, there was a 46% reduction in the risk of developing ESRD as uh, diagnosed by a need for dialysis or kidney transplant, a uh, need for renal replacement therapy. And these benefits were greater in patients with preserved kidney function. So what we see is that uh, not only is there something known as glycemic karma, you also have renal karma or nephro, uh, nephro karma. If you are able to give tight control without causing hypoglycemia in the initial years of diabetes, this advantage will last continuously. In Haryana, we have a saying, the words of a wise man and the advantages of Amla, that is Indian gooseberry, are known only after a decade. Similarly, the advantage of uh, using a drug like glycolyzide MR will be understood only after a decade of use. You do understand immediately because you get good HbA1c, but the real benefit you understand only after a long time. That is what advance on said. Irrespective of the renal phenotype of the patient, whether the patient had macro or micro or norgoalbuminuria, whether the patient had a, a preserved EGFR or a mildly or a moderately reduced EGFR, glycolyzide was effective. It was able to reduce HbA1c. Do note that glycolyzide is one drug that can be used even till an EGFR of 30. You do not have any change in pharmacokinetics of glycolyzide XR in patients with renal impairment. So this is one drug that you can use in renal impairment if your patient is not willing to take insulin. Across all EGFR levels, you will have not only glucolowering benefit, but also vascular benefit. So you see that the drug is CV safe. It reduces macro and microvascular disease and reduces nephropathy irrespective of what EGFR you started in. So overall, the risk benefit profile is in favor of uh, glycolyzide XR. There is more benefit and less risk. 
irrespective of the vascular phenotype also so far we were speaking of renal phenotype irrespective of the cardiovascular phenotype we find that uh, glycosylide xr is able to reduce the risk of macro and microvascular events so no matter what phenotype your patient comes to you with you can consider using this drug do not worry about the glucophenotype the reno phenotype or the vascular cardiovascular phenotype uh, use the drug it is a very strong drug to use but a very safe drug to use you will be able to achieve good hba1c control without causing hypoglycemia and weight gain this drug has been with us for decades now and i have been using it for decades when we see the way in which our understanding has evolved i feel happy as an expert in endocrinology i feel happy that we are able to do a better job for our patients now we are able to counsel them more confidently with confidence with strength that what we are giving you is good not only for your present but for your future as well what we are prescribing is good not only for your glucose but also for your kidney and heart what we are prescribing is not just for management or cure it is also for prevention of disease and it is for promotion of health how can we ensure good health for you youthfulness longevity by optimizing your glucose so that we prevent long term complications so that we prevent short term complications like hypoglycemia and weight gain and it would be nice if in an indian clinic we had a drug where we did not have to worry too much about investigations about monitoring glycoside xr is one such drug you do not have to monitor too much if you prescribe it to your patient your patient is from up country and she says doctor now i will come back to see you only after 6 months you do not have to worry about using this drug these are the advantages that we have learned from the advanced trial in my practice i do use all the modern drugs glycoside xr is also a modern sulfonylurea and i use all of them to the advantage of my patient thank you and i wish you a good journey ahead in your quest to serve our country men and women ensure glucose optimization